Hello and welcome to another episode of Stratocast, the UK Battletech South East podcast. My name is Stuart Strategos Level 3 and today we're going to be looking at C3 networks and we're going to probably film this over a couple of different videos because we're going to start basic. I'm going to be using Megamech here to help out but really this is really intended for people using tabletop mostly so they understand how C3 system works. We're just going to use Megamech to demonstrate that because Megamech is a perfect simulator for the Battletech system. So we're going to look at the C3 network rules which are part of what we would call the standard rule set. If you don't know what the standard rule set means, the standard rule set is all of the rules that are in Total Warfare and the tech manual. Really, there aren't too many rules in the tech manual, but the tech manual does explain how to work out battle value. So it's worth having, and it's a great thing for fluff. But those two books, so no TAC operations, no um, interstellar operations, the two what I would call core books. And most of the time you can get away with not having the tech manual. Unfortunately, this is one of the times where you need the tech manual to give you a couple of extra bits of information. Now. I won't be putting it on the screen any of the books because um, hopefully you'll have those yourself. I will make references to the page numbers as we go through. And we're going to have a look as well a bit at the history of C3 from the point of view from Sana. So C3 started by the Draconis, was started by the Draconis Combine in uh, 3050 as a kind of integrated uh, communication system and then it spread to House Devian, Federated Sons, and well, and then to the Federated Commonwealth as a whole. But really, at the beginning, it started mostly as a Draconis Combine uh, technology. And you'll see that in the unit uh, lists that we're going to have a look at about what, uh, what units have C3. So I'm going to do something first of all so we can have a look at what units have C3, and then we'll talk about how to construct the network. If you're looking for the C3 rules, you can go to the uh, tactic, the uh, uh, Total Warfare book on page 132, I think. Let's have a look, 132, 133, um, 131 to 133, and that's the latest edition, and it only takes about three pages. It is quite complicated, and it goes into C3s at two different levels. It goes into C3s just at the Lance level, and then it goes into C3 networks at a company level. Now, this video, we're just going to concentrate on having one Lance. And later on, we'll have a look at uh, more complex company level C3 networks. And last of all, we'll have a look at Comstar and Word of Blake, because I've just been building some Word of Blake Celestial Mechs, the Word of Blake C3i. The C3 system is primarily a, an Innisphere invention. It's not really used by the clans at all. Um, there are some mechs that appear right at the end of the timeline, 31, 51, where they've started just experimenting a bit with C3, but mostly it's in a sphere. And Comstar upgraded it later to something called Improved C3, which works with their level 3s, and it works slightly differently with their, um, what I should call their level 2s, which are 6 mechs. But we're going to just concentrate on the idea of a basic in a sphere lance of 4 mechs. So we're keeping this nice and simple. So on the screen here, you can see I've got uh, Mega Mech 49.15, which is the latest build. Um, and I have the first time I'm actually using this, so hopefully it's all going to work, work fine. We're going to have a look up to the combat units. I'm just going to click on Add a Combat Unit here. And in the Add a Combat win Unit window, this is great, again, if you, if you just want to print the sheets out and you just want to search. I'm going to, and I've limited to only standard technology, I'm going to click on Innisphere non uh, box set, which basically means not in the introductory set. So things that have the standard rules and not just introductory rules. And we're going to click on the advanced search. And in the advanced search, we've got lots of different things here. We're going to click on weapons and equipment. And I think we're going to click it only mechs to the time being. So we'll click on just mechs. Because uh, there are lots of vehicles with C3, but we'll just click on Mech for the time being. And we're going to go to this uh, equipment section here. We're going to go down, and we want to have C3 Master. So I can click on that. 
add that and we're going to have uh, or C free slave. So those are the two bits of equipment we're looking at. Mechs that have got C free master or C free slave in the 3067 um, error. And here we go. So this, these are all of the mechs and I can put them uh, in year order and you can see the first mech there, I've got the rattlesnake, which uh, it's a bit funny that the rattlesnake, I think that's probably a, a bit of an error and the fact because the rattlesnake is a, is a federated sons mech and really it's got a, a, a it's got a slave but that's only recently been added to the continuity i think that's a bit of a glitch that one uh, but you can see we've got the atlas the cyclops the hatamotohi okay so it really started the jenna it really started life as a draconis combined so all of these are draconis combined mechs and they've got the uh, c uh, acronym there at the end the mauler panther charger grasshopper hatamotochi uh, oh, that's the particularly named one, um, and so on. So you've got a whole series of mechs here. But my favourite have to be the um, what I call the Luthian Ironworks Omnimex, which are the first Inner Sphere Omnimex, and you can see them down here. So I'm going to pick from these guys. Now, not all of the all of these have the C3 uh, system, so I'm going to click the avatar first. And if we look on the avatar, we can see that the avatar has, this one has a C3 slave. Okay, so there are two different types of C3 units, something called a C3 master and a C3 slave. The C3 master is required to run the networks. You need one C3 master at least. Can't see the reason why in a Lancer 4 you'd have more than one, but you could. We'll talk about that in a minute, but to have at least one C3 master unit. So we want something that's got a C3 master unit. So what else have we got here that has a C3 master unit? Actually, let's do it by name and we'll find, we can actually filter here. We can, oh, there we go. So the avatar OC has got a C3 master. So we're gonna select that and that'll appear on our, on our roster here. And we're going to go for classic um, Blackjack next to Blackjack O. So where are you? Blackjack O. Blackjack, there's one variant. And this variant has a C3 slave. So we're going to select that. We're going to go for a Blackhawk KU. One of my favorite mechs recently. Ah, uh, oh, there isn't a Blackhawk KU that has C3. So until you get to a much later period, uh, which is a bit strange, I always thought. But let's go for the fire starter. We're going to go for a fire starter. Which one should we go for? Let's go for a close range one or the ranged variant. I think we'll go for the ranged variant. Here we go. And then finally, we're gonna go for something fast. We're gonna go for the Owens. So all of these are slave equipped. Let's go for the A. So there's our roster. We've picked an avatar with a C3 master a blackjack with a C3 slave, a fire starter with a C3 slave, and an Owens with a C3 slave. So I'm just going to reset these skills to 4 5. I've got it set on random skills. So at the moment, we haven't connected any of the C3 networks, so it's showing the base BV cost. But one of the most important things, which we'll come to in a minute, is that C3 costs a lot of BV to set up. But let's actually talk about composition. So in our Lance, we need at least one master. The master is in charge. It's basically running the show. And then you've got three slaves. Now you could have a C3 network with just one master and one slave if you wanted. You can actually have several masters linked together where you have to switch the masters over to being slave mode 
you've got to have always one master and then you've got to have one slave. Um, now, I'm going to disconnect that actually. So it's disconnected now. So this is the true BVs that they should be showing. So you can see so far our force, if we're aiming for something like 6,000 BV, which is a good size for a, a Lance versus Lance game in 3067, we've got 4,415. We've got one master, we've got three slaves, okay? And we need to connect them first. So when we connect them, the maths it does is this. We add up all of the uh, BV of the next, which is 4415, okay? So let's put an on-screen calculator on here. Computer does it all for you, but I don't want to show people what, what this is, okay? So we've got I've got this set to full screen mode. Let's just drop that into normal mode. Okay. So we've got 4415 and it costs for each mech, it adds 5%. So we basically add, take 20% of the entire value of this to the number of mechs you've got. If for some weird reason, and you could do this, you had just two mechs, it would be 10%. So it's 5% for each unit, up to a maximum, of course, of four in this case. If, and we'll look at this later, if you've got bigger company level C3 networks, that could be up to 12. So 12 would be a, a stomping 60% um, uh, addition. So we work out here what is 20% of this, so we times this by 0 0.2, and we get 883. So we're gonna add 883 BV, okay, to uh, the total cost. But actually, that's not really the proper way you should work it out. You should work it out individually per mech. So individually per mech, we add 5% of that value per mech. So let's just show you that close my calculator so we've got our total here of four four one five and we times it by more five percent so zero point zero five so each mech we're adding and we should round this to two two one um, we're adding 221 BV to each mech and they each get added the same amount so for this network we're going to add 221 to each mech so let's see if the Mega Mech's doing the maths correctly. So I'm going to put that to one side. So 221 to each mech. So that should make that uh, 1,627. Okay. So I'm going to connect these now. Now in, in Mega Mech, you actually go to the menu here and right click on the menu and you go to C3 and you choose what you're going to connect to. So you click on the slave and you go to C3 and you choose to connect to the avatar. And as you choose, the BVs are increasing and every time they're increasing by 5% of the value of all of the mechs that are in the network. And there we go, we got it right. So 1627. So now the total value of this is 5299. Now it's important when you do your BV calculations that you do them in the correct order. So if I go to the tech manual, and if you go to right at the end of the tech manual, so it's kind of about page, I don't know, let's have a look, 309 or something like that. Let's have a look. Um, not that one. There's a whole section about calculating BV for a force. Here we go. It's called Constructing a Battle Force. It's on page 315. Uh, and it says here that um, two or more units in the battle force equipped with C3 systems can be designated as part of a C3 network. Add 5% of the total BV of all units in the C3 network to each of the linked network. But you do things in a particular order. So the BV, you start first or adjust it by um, target acquisition gear, then by C3 and then by skill rating. Now we'll talk about tag in a bit. So for instance, I would work out this value first based on the mechs being four or five, and then I would apply the skill rating chart. So the skill rating chart 
for instance, for a pilot skill free and um, pilot skill free, sorry, pilot skill four, gunnery skill three would be 1.32, uh, I think. And we multiply that by the BV. So that would give us our value, but we do the C free first. So you do the C free network first, and then you apply the BV for the change in pilot. So let's just do that. I'm gonna increase that to, I think they've errated it actually. I think it's 1.38. I think the version of tech manual I've got is slightly out of date. Uh, so we're gonna change that to a free four, and it should increase this by one point. Uh, I think it's 1.38. Let's just uh, get the calculator out again. So I can show you this, I can go uh, 1627 times by 1.38. So this will give me the multiplier for a, a free four pilot. So it should be 2245 rounded, okay, down. Or rounded, so but this case rounded down. So I'm gonna click OK. What did I say it was gonna be? 2345, I think I got that wrong. Uh, must be lower than that. I'll look it up in a minute. But the, the multiplier, you have to make sure that the multiplier is um, is correct and is applied after the C3 network. So once you've done the multiplier and you've done it, you've you've applied it for your skill, you can um, you, you've got your final force BV. But say for instance we wanted to think about um, tag and semi-guided munitions. Now semi-guided munitions are also in the standard rule set. So I'm going to just change this back to 4.5 just so we see what the basic BV is. Now an extra thing that the C3 master has is that C3 masters have tag built into them. C3 slaves don't have tag built into them but this Owens here does have a tag. Okay. So if we look at equipment, oh, it's not an equipment, it's, if we go to view, I can see that it's got a tag, the fire starter doesn't have tag, and our blackjack, if I go to view, doesn't have tag, okay? But what we can do is we can say take the avatar, which is given tag by the C3, even though it doesn't show it in the equipment, it's built into the C3. We're gonna give this, um, we're gonna give this um, avatar some semi-guided missiles. Now it's got LRM 10s, so if we go to uh, configure and we select as the ammo here, uh, ammo semi-guided, and we take one ton only, okay, just so I can show you the maths. Semi-guided missiles, if you look in the TAC manual, and this is, um, if I can find the page, it's, in the BV section for weapons. So find the page, it's, if I click through. why you should prepare your page numbers first before doing a video. Here we go. Okay, here we go. So the BV of weapons for LRMs. Uh, so LRM fives, the cost for the ammo is six, 11, 17, and 23 for the five, 10, 15, and 20 racks. So semi-guided missiles for LRM-10s are gonna cost 11 BV per 
per ton added to every unit that has tag. So every unit that has tag is the Owens and the Avatars. Because the Owens and the Avatar have tag, they're both going to get plus 11. But that's not just going to be plus 11. It's going to be plus 11, and then that's going to feed into the calculation for the um, C3. So let's actually cancel the C3. I'm going to cancel that. Cancel the C3 so we can see these things going on one at a time. So now we've just got 1906, 1406. And then we're going to add to this our um, semi guided missiles. So I'm going to go to configure. I'm going to add the semi guided missiles. And you should see this is going to go up by 11, and the Owens is going to go up by 11 to 69. One and this is going to go one four, uh, one four one seven. Okay, so if I've done my maths right, okay, six nine one. For some reason, <laughs> Megamix proving me wrong here. Uh, Megamix not applying it to the to the avatar, and it should. I'm going to have to report that as a as an error, um, because the, because it has tag, it should be increasing the value. So that's that's one to report because that should come out as as one four one seven. Shows you that Mega Mech is not always a hundred percent correct, and the guys do a brilliant job there. But every so often errors creep in, so that's one I'll flag up. Hopefully, I'll, I'll make the next version. But if you're doing this by hand, the any unit with tag capability, including the Avatar, would have its BV increased. So if I then go to uh, the avatar and I put a second ton of LRM-15, LRM-10 semi-guided missiles, it's added another 11. Okay, so it's added 22. Again, it should be to each unit with tag, but for some reason it's not adding it to the avatar. So now that we apply that first, then we apply the, the um, C3 network. So I'll put the C3 network on. Okay, and then after that, we can apply our skills. So, and just to show you, I'm just going to check this, and I've got uh, the current up to date table on my blog, which is comstar.home.blog, on all of the um, events we run. We, I do put the um, the values on the. Uh, on the events. Let's just find one. So I've got an up to date table here which is in the errata. Here's the up-to-date table, and it says that uh, skill, piloting skill three and four, oh, it is 1.32, it has been updated. So 1.32 times 1628, if I do that on the calculator, 1.628 times by 1.32, equals 2148, so 2149 when it rounds up. So when I increase the skill here, it'll go to 2149. There we go, got it right this time. So again, you can find that skill table on the errata, but it's also been updated on the new version of Tech Manual. I think they, they did a, a reprint actually recently. So maybe they finally updated the book so again, this actually I think should cost slightly more because I think they've slightly done the rule wrong for, for the um, avatar. But that gives you the cost. We've got a cost of 5,845 BV. Uh, that basically means our C3 network and our, uh, and our missiles have cost us an extra about 1,400 BV. 
so the equivalent of a medium mech. So it gives you an idea how expensive just for a Lance having a C3 network is. And I'm going to push that expense as well by going to our fire starter. I'm going to just drop some guided ammo on this guy as well. So that's another plus 11. So each one with tech is going to have plus 44 now. So the Owen should have plus 44. This should have plus 44. Then you times the skill modifier by that new skill, that new BV value. Then, uh, sorry, no, first you do the C3. So you do the tag, then the, the C3, and then the skill modifier last. So there we go. So that's now gone up to 5902. And really it should be higher. It should be another 44 times. Uh, 44 times by 20% um, times by um, 1.32. So it should even be higher than that, really. But we'll leave it at that. So it gives you an idea of how to build a C3 Lance. And again, you can intermix vehicles and mechs with C3. You don't have to be all mechs or all vehicles. There is even later some C3 battle armor, but that comes much later. Uh, but we've got here our master unit our C3 slave and uh, two other slaves here. And again, you can just run it with one, with two units. You could just have the avatar and the blackjack, for instance, and that would be a C3 network. So let's um, add some competition in here. We're going to add a, a, a an automatic bot. And I'm going to give the bot a pretty standard lance. I'm going to clear the advanced search and we're just going to give it pretty standard max. We're going to start with a battle master. We're going to go for the free M. We're going to add, what should we go for? Catapult. I'm going straight up the box here and we're going to go for the Catapult C2, so that's slightly enhanced. Or the C4C, go for the C4C, there we go. We're gonna go for a Wolverine. I kinda like the 7K, all pulses. And finally, let's go for the um, locust. So standard, standard box, and we'll go for the free M. So I'm just going to transfer those to princess. And already that BV is almost equal to mine. So that's with the random skills actually. Let's change the skills a bit. Four five four five four five. So with basic four or five skills it comes out less. So if I Beef up the uh, battle master and make it a commander with three four. And let's beef up the catapult as well. And we've even got enough BV left maybe to give the locust a bit of a push. There we go. So almost, almost exactly the same BVs. I'm going to select a map. I'm going to play on a map that's a uh, map with two. And let's pick a typical grasslands. Let's go for the, um, what should we go for? Go for rolling hills two. Some of these are named slightly odd.
There we go, rolling hills two and rolling hills three. Can't go wrong with rolling hills, there we go. And I'm gonna set the start location. So I'm gonna set this one. Configure player north. And the enemy is going to be from the south. So that's it. So fine, let's give ourselves a new paint job. We're going to be the Sword of Light. So the Draconis Combine. There we go. Sword of Light. And we're going to set up our player two as being the federated commonwealth so let's go for federated sons and the classic one of the uh what are they called the davian guards there we go so nice and easy to see a difference there We've set, set to 3067. I've got no special rules. We're playing completely Total Warfare rules. I haven't even put floating crits on. Map selected. Let's start. We won't run the full game. I'm just going to show you a few turns just to see how it looks. Oh, I haven't turned off the, uh, the beeps. Sorry. We'll have to put up with the beeps. So what we're going to do is we're going to deploy our forces... Just going to get rid of the um, key tip, the tool tips here. There we go. So, I'm deploying my forces here, and oh, that's something I forgot to do. When you, whenever you start a new version, you have to turn off the uh, the thing that causes the uh, um, the scrolling with the mouse, if I can remember where it is. There we go. Mouse wheel zooms map, which is really annoying because I've got a magic mouse because I'm playing on a Mac. And what we're going to do is we're going to add the uh, just going to zoom out slightly. find this bit a bit fiddly there we go so we're going to put in our avatar it's got long range so we're going to try and keep it high up so it can get a good shot you know maybe aim to try and get onto this level three here actually i think here's a good a good place just about Getting up onto here would be really good. So let's start down here. So the opponent's deploying straight opposite me with the Battle Master and the Catapult. Um, I'm going to go for the Blackjack next. And we'll put the Blackjack over here. We're going to aim to get on top of this ridge here. Now you can see a line has appeared. Now that's because this is the, the Master and this is the Slave. And this is showing the communication network between the two. This doesn't have to obey line of sight rules. So basically it goes straight from one to the other, but it can go through hills, it can go through other mechs. The only reason this is here is if we have um, enemy ECM, which we don't at the moment. And if an enemy ECM cuts this line or goes over the mech, it blocks the C3 network, just like it does for other things. So. These lines are quite important in Mega Mech for showing it. it's quite a useful thing, but it helps us here just showing that uh, if, a, if any part of the six hexes of an ECM cuts this, it would block the, it would shut down the, uh, the network. Ah! 
I'm going to go for Firestarter over here, and I'm intentionally spreading my max out quite a lot so we can show the full effectiveness of C3. And then finally, so they've really, really bunched up here, we're going to choose to put our Owens. Now, Owens, we want to have the Owens really, really fast and somewhere where it's going to get full effect. So. We're going to go here. And you can see all of these are connected to the avatars. The avatars, the master, and all of the networks are connected. They all have to go back to the avatar. But this is only really to, for the purposes of uh, for ECM. If there's no ECM on the table, it really doesn't matter because your opponent can't block them. The only thing your opponent can do, of course, is destroy the master. And once you destroy the master, the network collapses. Destroying one of the slaves doesn't really have an effect. Okay, so we're into movement phase. Opponent's battle master has come down the hill. I'm going to put my avatar up the hill, right straight away onto the top. Actually, we can walk. We can just pop to here because that battle master has made a really tempting target. So I've got lots of trees here on this level two, but if I go up onto level three here, I can completely ignore these trees. Still quite far away, but this is where the wonder of C3 comes in. Fire starter, again, gonna pop up onto this level two. That'll help get rid of some of the trees. I'm not going for complete tactical sense here. I'm trying to go for the best target numbers. You can see the locust has popped up here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and close a distance to see the battle master and get as close as possible. So I'm gonna run the Owens down here. That's seven. One to turn is eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So we've got within range one, two, three, four of the battle master. Now this is gonna be important. This is gonna mean that every single unit that's connected to that network that targets the battle master or even the catapult, or the catapult might be even better, is gonna have a range of the range from the Owens, from the closest unit. So the Owens is here, this, catapult is only range three away so I can actually target everything within range three and there we go so now we can actually start the weapon phase so if I look at my avatar I've got a PPC an ultra AC5 gonna Switch to the expanded view here. I like the expanded view, but it's a bit big. So I've got the PPC and Ultra AC5, and I can change the Ultra mode by going to Mode, changing it to Ultra, the LRM10, the medium lasers. Now, the medium lasers, what range am I at? I'm at range one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I can't fire the medium lasers because they're out of range. Okay. If it's out of range, you still can't use the C3 to make it short range. So nothing's going to make this medium laser go beyond the nine hexes. Well, all of the other items, the, the PPC, the Ultra AC, are in range. So if I now click on my target, which is a catapult. The catapult's on level three, so I've got no intervening terrain. And I can see from the 
maths here. If I zoom that down. It's not showing the target selected. Hold on. Okay, so I can select my targets to catapult, and then you can see that the target number modifier is listed. Oh, it's still not working. Why is it not working? There we go. So there we go. So actually, we're not in the um, weapons fire phase. Completely forgot. We've got the tag phase first. So the tag is in range, and again because. I'm within range free with the Owens to the catapult, I can use the tag as if it was range free. That's really powerful. So this avatar is gonna be able to target the tag onto there and on Mega Mech, I click on C3 Master, it knows that's the tag. And then I can click on fire and that will fire the tag off. And then the Owens has got tag as well. So just in case the first tag fails, I'm going to tag with both, and I've tagged. So because I've tagged, we don't get any movement modifiers for the catapult. So if we look at the catapult, the catapult has a target number modifier of... Um, doesn't say can't remember how many it moved when you hover over it it'll tell you um, well maybe it didn't move enough to actually have a modifier anyway but if it had a modifier it now would have no modifier the, the semi-guided missiles would stop that So what we're going to do then is move to the weapon phase. And now I can actually take the avatar and I can click on the PPC, click the target as being the catapult. And you can see it's dotted because it's been tagged. And it's given me a hit number of four. Amazing, eh? Three for gunnery skill. One for the attacker walked, zero range because we're only at range three because the C3 is there. So that's a really impressive man. Oh, it did walk. There you go. It walked to one. So t target number modifier of zero. It's uh, so really the semi guided missiles are a bit of a waste in this case. But we are going to hit it on, we are going to hit it on fours from that range. So if I fire the PPC, the Ultra AC-5 again is at fours because the range is reduced to three. The LRM-10, now this is an interesting rule. The minimum range still is counted from the firing unit, not from the closest unit in the C3 network. So for instance, even though I'm at range three for the purposes of range from the C3, I don't use that for my minimum range calculation. I still use the fact that I'm 10 hexes away. So I'm going to fire the LRM-10 and I'm going to choose the semi-guided missiles. I've got another LRM-10. Now the medium lasers, even though I'm effectively at range 3 for working out target numbers, because it's over range 9, it can't fire. So I can't fire those. So I'm done firing. There we go. So we've worked that out. Now, more, even more impressive is going to be this next one. So the blackjack. So this blackjack is a nasty blackjack. It's got a Gauss rifle. And we're going to use this Gauss rifle to make this. OK. 
catapult have a very unpleasant day. So I click on the catapult, and now I need a five. Four for my gunnery skill, one because I walked. And it's treating me, even though I'm at range 16, it's treating me as if I was at range three. This is the power of C3. It is absolutely awesome when it works. And if you're prepared to pay the cost. So we're gonna fire our Gauss rifle. We're gonna fire our LRM-10. I didn't change it to um, to semi-guided because it's already Artemis capable. You can actually switch from Artemis capable to LRM, but then you just waste the uh, Artemis if you if you switched it to uh, semi-guided. Small laser, of course, can't hit because it's only got a range of three, even though I'm effectively at range three. Firestarter as well. It's got LRM-10. So it's at range 14, which would be medium range, but because I'm at range zero, I'm at I'm range three effectively, it acts as zero. So again, I need fives. Small laser and flamers can't hit because they're out of range. And lastly, the Owens. Now the Owens, of course, is at range three, so it doesn't really matter. So we can just fire its weapons normally. So there we go. So how much damage did we do to this catapult? This is the only round I'm going to play. I'm just going to see how effective this is. So first of all, the opponent's locust fired a medium laser. The avatar had missed. He did 11s because it's at range, unlike all of my mags. My avatar then, it fires its PPC, it needs a four, it rolls a seven, hits 10 damage, ultra AC five, hits, rolls nine, two shots hit, so on the cluster table, one to the head, nice. Still rolled a three though to hit with the LRM 10s, but the other one hit with uh, six missiles. The Wolverine targeted and missed with its large pulse. The blackjack though, oh it missed with the Gauss rifle. See this, still bad luck on Mega Mac. Need a five, rolled a four. The Artemis 10 hit though, using eight missiles. The Battlemaster, it did get a hit, but it got an ERPPC hit because it needed a 10. No, it needed an eight. And then hit with one medium laser on a 10. It missed with everything else. But the fire starter nails both of its LRM 10s getting six and six missiles and the catapult does manage to hit with 16 missiles and seven missiles no, 16 missiles and oh the second one missed and the Owens they're quite good Owens it mashed in with a couple of streaks oh one streak missed on a six second streak hit on a six both machine guns though were at range three so they missed. Small post laser hit though. So overall, that catapult has taken a whopping amount of damage that turn. I don't know how much damage it took. Okay, but it took, took quite a lot of damage. So we managed to hit it. It would have been great if that Gauss rifle would hit. We managed to hit it several times, all at target number five, despite the fact we were all at medium range, except for the Owens. So the Owens was at short range. So there we go, the power of C3 networks. Okay, and amazingly though, my avatar fell down because it, of course, failed its piloting skill roll. It took 20 damage and it's got a piloting skill of a of a five, of a four, sorry, so it gets plus one, rolled a four. So C3, brilliant system, but can't improve your dice rolls, even if you're playing on Mega Mac. So to recap then for C3, um, for a lance, you need one master. The rest can be slaves. You don't need to have all of them connected to the C3 network. If you've got two mechs, it's plus 10%. If you've got three mechs, it's 15%. If you've got four mechs, it's 20%. And then you add that BV cost to each, each unit. So you add 5% of the total cost of all of your mechs. 
that are in the network. So add in all the mechs that are in the network, not in your lance, but just in the network, and then add that 5% to each mech, okay? But overall, if you're working total BV, it's the equivalent of plus 5, 10, 15 or 20%. Um, other things to remember that the master does have a tag, so that can be useful. And you always calculate the range from the closest unit. Now, having a look at this situation, if, for instance, this locust for some reason had C3, not C3, it had an ECM, the ECM would stretch out in a radius of, of six and it would cut through the line to the Owens and it would cover up the Owens and the Owens ECM would be, the Owens C3 network connection would be cut and it wouldn't work. But the connection between the avatar and the fire starter would still work. But because, say one, two, three, four, five, because this line of sight went straight through um, the ECM bubble that the locust would make that would actually stop the avatar communicating with the blackjack and the blackjack would drop out of the network as well. Now they only drop out of the network as long as the ECM is there. One thing I would say with C3 networks and ECM is they are very prone to disruption by ECM and the only thing you can do is destroy the ECM. So if your opponent knows you're bringing C3 they can bring ECM and ruin your day quite quickly. There is a more advanced rule in TACOPS, um, advanced rules, uh, which allows you to switch ECM to electronic counter countermeasures, which basically can cancel out ECM. I won't go into the full details of that, but I really think if you're going to have C3 networks, they're only really worth playing if you're allowing the advanced rule to have the counter. So you can so if my opponent's got ECM, I can basically bring an ECM unit, switch it to ECCM and cancel his ECM. That's worth having a read to actually see the improvements there. So is it worth the cost? You know, the jury's out for Lance and Lance games. This is a 6,000 BV versus 6,000 BV. I think just in that initial exchange, I've shown that I've, I'm able to deliver quite a, a devastating first round attack, getting far more you know, damage on target than my opponent um, using, you know, just massed fire and using the Owens here to get close. If I've got a savvy opponent, and Princess here isn't always the most savvy opponent, the first thing I would do would be to kill the Owens. Because if you kill the Owens, then you basically stop your opponent from um, drawing the closest unit. And you'd have to kill it completely, because even if it was disabled and it was still it was still there it'd still work um if the c3 network if the c3 equipment gets critted it stops working and then the, 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 net, the network goes down so that's a, a basic um lance level c3 network um, next time we'll have a look at constructing a um, two lances and even a company level c3 network and look at how more complicated that gets as far as the maths and how much more I would say hideously expensive it gets, but hopefully that's a good start for people to have a go at playing C3, either on tabletop or a mega mech, but to actually work out the costs. And really, again, you do need total warfare and you do need to have um, tech manual to show you the four BV calculations, or just put it into into um, into mega mech, and it mostly works out correctly. I think maybe that one issue to look at. Okay, until next time when we'll look at uh, company level C3 networks, I'll see you then.